Greetings, peeps. I'm here with Stan the Man. Yo. He's been helping me out today. Get I've some been stuff getting in his way. Me. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's been distracting me at every turn to make sure I don't get any project completely done. One thing we did get done, which is uh, you guys are going to love this. And who did it? It's, this was Stan's so idea. I didn't, he doesn't do anything, yet I'm the one that got something done. He's the one that got the stuff done. He got the parts and everything. He found, he, remember I was telling you guys in the last video how we're having a problem finding the flex pipe? Well, we got some flex pipe, all right. So I told you guys before that we were having problems finding the flex hose for the exhaust because the way this works is you know the generator shakes and the tailpipe is, is stable. So over time, it would actually loosen the tailpipe from the muffler. What we did, we went to this place called Metal Hose Pros. Pros. Yep. Yeah, so Metal Hose Pros. In Forney, Texas. In Forney? Forney, just outside of East of Dallas. Just outside of Forney, Texas. Outside of Dallas. Yeah. Outside of Dallas. He's going to make me correct. This is going to be three minutes of me telling you guys what the address is. <laughs> we got this flexible pipe here. The, the owner of the, the shop was super cool and actually gave us this pipe for free. Believe it or not, it's a stainless flexible pipe. Let me show you what we did here. You guys can see that. That's where it's mounted to the muffler. It comes down. Then we have it mounted here the, to the bumper. We have this going up. And now we got another piece of conduit. So it goes all the way to the top of the band. Basically, I mean, if you guys ever heard of it, I don't know what the name brand is, but they, they make these exhaust stacks for RVs. They're pretty expensive. They're up to $200 to run the exhaust up to the roof. And what, this conduit was like six bucks. Six or seven bucks. The hose was free. $60 hose, he said. 60, he said around 60 bucks. Around 60 take... bucks typically for the hose, but we got it for free. And then what, the clamps were a couple bucks a piece probably? Yeah, about 250 yeah. Yeah, so uh, real cheap exhaust for the generator. And now... He's almost a semi. He's got a, a diesel exhaust now. Yeah. You need to have a little turnout at the top of the chrome tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I might have to because what happens when water gets down there? Yeah, I don't think there's that much. It'll burn out. Yeah. And it's stainless. It can't rot. So. What the uh, goal is for today is to equalize the house batteries. I still have to pull the mattress out here. Got to pull the mattress out. And no, I don't have to pull the TV or anything out, but I got to pull out the refrigerator. All uh, the containers and stuff over here, all this stuff that's plugged in has got to be unplugged and pulled out. Then I could pull the bed out, then take the plywood out, and that gets me to the three house batteries. Uh, Odin is now in the other room. I'll tell you right now why I don't like to take him out of the van. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? See guys, he doesn't like to be outside the van. All you people keep saying, you let him run around in the shop. You let him run around outside. You let him run around in other rooms. Generally, no, because he throws a fit. He's like literally like a three-year-old. Uh, if he can't see me, especially if he, can, if he can't see me, but he can hear me, then he throws a fit. Like if I'm really quiet, he'll still meow, but he won't meow as much. You want to see him? Look. All of a sudden, no, you don't. You know, all this place, oh yeah, see, now you're, now you're all cool about it, because I'm in here. Yeah, you whining and whining and whining, and as soon as I come in, you stop. That's funny. Okay, well, I'm going back to work. So really, that's all I gotta do. That lets me get down here to the, this is where, the, where one battery is, and then there's two more under here. I gotta take the refrigerator out to get to that. Sure. You're going to do one at a time anyway, right? I'm going to do that one first since it's easiest to get to, yeah. and then i got to take everything out of the refrigerator. Yeah. Do you have to physically take it out or just unplug it and just take the cables well, off? I just take the one, one clamp off the battery, okay. take okay. the positive off, and then I can charge it. It's fine. I could do this later. Are you filming that? Greetings, peoples! I'm here in Stan's shop trying to get some work done. Phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Good, now he can go bother someone else for a few minutes so I can get this done. 
Okay, yesterday we did how to desulfate your starter battery, which is a flooded lead acid. Today we have one of my 100 amp hour AGN batteries, and I'm going to show you how to desulfate and equalize those. So this is the brand I have. It's uh, the Universal Battery, and you can see the stats on the side of the battery. If you want to fully charge it, charge it up to 14.9 volts. So this battery typically takes anywhere from 14 and a half to 14.9 to charge. So if you actually want to desulfate or knock the sulfur off the lead plates, you have to put more power than that into it. You can also see here the initial current's 30 amps. That shows you how much you can actually charge it and discharge it. Now because this is an AGM battery, it's sealed, which means you can't put any water in it and any hydrogen in there will stay in there as long as you don't overpressurize the battery or overheat the battery. It does have emergency release. If for some reason you do put way too much juice into it, it will cook and it will release hydrogen and that hydrogen will seep out. So you have to be careful. Be careful not to overcharge these. Now this battery charger, if you only run it once, or you run it a couple of times on the, you know, through the charging cycles, it'll be fine. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to run 15 or 16 volts in this thing for like hours and hours. You want to do it for a short period of time, make sure the battery doesn't get too hot, put your ear next to it and see if you hear any bubbling. Okay, step one. I have the leads on the battery. I have the meter hooked up to the battery. You can see we got 13.6 volts, 13.7 if you round up. Battery charger is showing 13.5, so it's a little on the low side, but that's fine. What we're going to do is kick it into AGM mode, which is the second mode here. Yesterday we used standard for lead acid. We're going to use AGM mode for the AGM battery. It uses a different charge curve for it. And we're going to put it on 10 amps, which is the maximum charge. Kicks on. That's the percentage, so it says it's 52% charged right now. And we're going to go ahead and lit it. You'll see that the voltage slowly trickles up on the meter. We're going to go ahead and let it go until it gets to 100%, and that'll be step one on how to desulfate an AGM battery. Okay, stage one charging is complete. So we did the 10 amps AGM. We let it go until it read 100%. It's currently sitting at 14.1 volts. So all we do now is we let this rest for a little bit, and then we're going to go ahead and kick it on. We'll do it on the middle one, the six amps, and then we'll do it one more time on the two amps. And that should be enough to desulfate this battery. Hello peoples! It is Wednesday here at Stan's Workshop. And on today's agenda, I got to clean my refrigerator out. Uh, something exploded in there while I was in Wyoming. I don't know what happened, but something some kind of alcoholic beverage blew up and I gotta clean that all out. Item number two on the agenda is going to be to clamp all this exhaust down and make sure it's all airtight. Item three is gonna be to get the AGM batteries equalized that are in the van. Okay, so it has been a full day since I did the equalization on this battery. As you can see, the meter says 13.1 volts. So it sounds pretty good that I'm gonna be able to save these batteries. And it did hold a really good charge overnight. So all I need to do now is do the same process on the two batteries that are inside the van. I'm not gonna pull those out, I'm gonna do those inside, so we'll cut to that. This is gonna be for the last part of the equalization of AGM batteries. So what we did with the battery charger was we ran it twice on both of these big AGM batteries, uh, once on the 10 amp mode and then again on the 2 amp mode, and they were done pretty quickly. So I think my batteries were a lot, a lot better shape than I thought. They were just undercharged. Okay, let's show you what the final voltage is. These batteries have been resting for about 36 hours, and we're at 12.92. Let's see what the other battery is. 12.93. So. There you have it. I went from batteries that were pretty much 10 volts dead back up to 12.9 
volt charge just by using that battery charger twice on the AGM setting brought them pretty much back to life. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And so what we did is we got some, we actually found a place that specializes in flexible hose. What? I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? You to spend all day doing this shit, don't you? <laughs> Stan wants me to permanently move in because he'll, ne he'll never let me get one thing done without making, you know, he's in the background. I'm trying to get back here to show him this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I bet you were. <laughs> what? Is it on still? Yeah, it's Good on. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, I take back all the good stuff I said about Stan. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Joe Lazaro. <laughs>